Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to explore the amount of energy stored on a capacitor. And of course, that depends upon how much charge you store on a capacitor. But to, to figure that out, let's go through a simple little exercise here. We have a capacitor with certain dimensions connected to a battery. And we have a switch here, so temporarily holding off any charge built up onto the capacitor until we close the switch. As long as the switch is open, no charges can flow onto the capacitor. So time equals zero, we're going to close the switch. Now charges will begin to flow. So the way this works is first one charge comes in and settles down onto the capacitor plate. It has lots of room, so no other charges pushing it away. But this charge here will push a charge over here away. And so that charge will now go to the battery and that causes this plate now to have a negative charge or an excess of one negative charge because this charge pushed a positive charge away. So how much work did that take? Well, the amount of work that it took is going to be equal to the force times the distance to move a charge across the plate, across the gap of the plates here. So even though we're not physically moving any charges across from one plate to another, the amount of work that it took to put the first charge on there is equal to the amount of work it would take to bring a charge all the way from here to here. The reason for that is because the effect of pushing a charge on here caused this charge to be pushed away and so it has the same amount of work, the same effect as if you're moving a charge across the gap. So if we take a look at that, the amount of work done would then be equal to the force times the distance traveled and of course the distance would be the distance between the two capacitor plates and then you realize that the force felt by a charge between the plates is going to equal uh, is going to depend upon the strength of the electric field so the work done is going to be equal to the strength of the field times the charge Q multiplied times the distance D and that would be the work done to bring one charge across now, the electric field is going to be extremely weak because there's only one excess charge on there, so the amount of work is basically zero. So then another charge gets, gets pushed on there, so it sets, settles down somewhere on the plate, pushes another positive charge away, and so now you can see that there's a second negative charge here on that plate, and then a third charge, and a fourth charge, and a fifth charge, and so forth, and as more and more charges pile up, more and more charges more and more effect is felt on the other side, more charges gets pushed into the battery, and you can see that the capacitor begins to be charged. But now, since there's more charges on there, there's more repulsive force, it now takes more work to put a charge on there, because as more and more charge piles up there, the electric field gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and therefore the work, which is now equal to the strength of the field times the charge times D, you can see that definitely begins to uh, uh, make itself felt and more and more work is done. Now here we have a graphic of that, the amount of work done by putting charges onto the capacitor plate. For the first one, the amount of work is minute because the electric field is basically zero. But then as you put more and more charge on there, the electric field becomes stronger and stronger. It requires more and more force to push charges onto the plate more and more work needs to be done as you can see that the amount of work increases more and more and more. Now, if we define the electric field as what we did in the previous video, the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught, which is the charge divided by epsilon sub naught times A, so instead of thinking about the amount of work done in terms of the strength of the electric field, we can think of it in terms of the amount of charge that we've placed onto the plates. If Q is the amount of charge we have on the plates at any point in time, we could then express the amount of work done to put one additional charge on there. We can put, make that in terms of the charge rather than the, the electric field. So the work done is not going to be equal to E, it's now going to be Q divided by epsilon sub naught times A, and in the numerator we still have Q times D. Now the small Q represents an additional charge being put onto the capacitor, the big Q represents the charge that's already there, D is a separation distance, epsilon sub naught, the permittivity of free space, and A, the area of the plate. Now, D, epsilon sub naught, and A, that kind of looks familiar. It turns out 
That was the definition of the capacitance of a physical capacitor. It was equal to epsilon sub naught times the area of the plate divided by d. So notice that d divided by epsilon sub naught divided, divided by a is actually the inverse of c. 1 over c is equal to d divided by epsilon sub naught times a. So we can replace d, epsilon sub naught, and a by a c in the denominator. So the work done to add an additional charge onto the capacitor can be written as q, little q, divided by c. Now, q divided by c. That also reminds me of something, because I know that when you put charge in a capacitor, q is equal to c times v, so q divided by c is equal to v. So that's equal to the voltage on the capacitor, or applied to the capacitor. So here, a q divided by c can be replaced by v, so the work done is equal to v times q. Now that's the work done for each particular charge placed on the capacitor. Initially, again, the work done is virtually zero because the voltage across the capacitor is virtually zero since there's no, virtually no charge on it. But eventually, when you put the last one on there, the voltage across the capacitor will now be equal to the voltage across the battery. And so now that will be the most amount of work required to put it there. Since there is a linear relationship between the amount of work done and how much charge is there, you can then say that on average, you can take half the voltage. When you're at the halfway point, you can then say that the work, on average, to put one charge on the capacitor will be one half the voltage times that charge. And then if you add them all up, add up all the charges, add up all the charges, that means that the total work, so this is of course for one, this is for one charge, right? For one Q, this is still for one Q, for one charge. That's the average work to put one charge onto the capacitor. And of course, the total work is going to be equal to one half the voltage times the sum of all the charges you're going to place on there. Now, of course, all the charges you're going to place on there is going to be the total charge Q. So essentially, the total work to put all the charge onto the capacitor is going to be one half V times Q, or typically written Q times V. But this then becomes the energy stored on a capacitor, because the energy stored on a capacitor is going to be equal to the total work you did to put all the charge onto the capacitor. So essentially, the energy, and so you, usually to not confuse the letter E for energy versus electric field, we're going to use the letter U for energy. So the U, the amount of energy on a capacitor, is going to be equal to one half the charge on the capacitor times the voltage applied to the capacitor. So that will be the equation we can then use for the energy on a capacitor. Now you sometimes see that equation a slightly different format because ultimately we can replace Q by C times V. So if we do that, we can also write that U is equal to one half C V squared. So that would be another way in which we can write the energy on a capacitor. And finally, if we replace V by Q over C, we could say that U is equal to one half Q squared divided by C. So simply, and that should be a U, not a V here, so be careful, that's the energy U. So the amount of energy on a capacitor, as you can see, is one half Q times V, but it can also be written as one half Z V squared or one half Q squared over C, simply by using this definition. So in this case, we replace Q by C times V, or in this case, we replace V by Q over C. That's, those are the three equations that describe the energy stored on a capacitor in terms of charge, the voltage, or the capacitance. And that's how it's done.